All right, today we have a little recap on SEI uh, for a follower named Abe. He's got a couple questions. And if you guys have a question about crypto, like technical analysis, where price is going or whatever, you can always ask if I have time or for something I know I'll, I'll handle. Most of my main money and like side investment from my main business goes into crypto right now because of the halving. I know a little bit about real estate, not a whole lot, still learning. That, that's part of like my whole documentary series to a million. Uh, but crypto, crypto is something I'm good at. Trading is something I'm good at. That's like one of my main my main things. Other stuff is I'm just like getting into. So anyway, so Abe says, hey man, uh, watch YouTube videos, just follow Instagram. I wonder if you can answer some questions about crypto and the markets. He is fairly new. So he has a couple part question. So what is your price prediction for SEI? So we'll go through that. And uh, he didn't give me a time frame. So we'll go through a couple like near short term time frames. And then I saw your videos on it because I have it back then. I've already been day trading it off and on. I'm back in SEI again myself personally. And he's been in since December. And then also, what do you think of the tokenomics of SEI? That's question two. Because the team is able to sell an amount of their tokens in August, I just wonder if they will rug or not. All right, so let's go take a look at a couple things, like where, where it can go, if it's a solid project or not. So being a day trader, I don't worry a whole lot about the tokenomics too much because I don't plan on being there too long you know if i look at a chart and it's trending i'm like cool maybe i'll be there for a day an hour a week a swing a month maybe it it kind of really depends if it's something like sei that has potential to go real far maybe i'll take a long-term position but a long-term position to me might not be a long-term position to you so make sure whoever you're following or budding up with they're talking to you like get their lexicon and find out when they say like oh, i'm in it for the long haul is that a cycle like four years is that until better tech comes along is that till your kids graduate like what's what's you know what's their time horizon so for me let's see let's take a look at it right now looks like it's kind of new it's pretty much on the uptrend let's look at it on coinbase and also on binance let's take this off hiking issues just go regular candles so over here on Coinbase, looks like it was listed back in September. We'll look to see if it has any further listings. Um, it was pretty much a pop and drop. Couple months recovery. Volume was nil. That's good. It pretty much bottomed out. Bottomed out with like no interest. And then as it started to climb, volume's good. Volume's good. Volume's good. And then that's when the whole market kind of pulled back, right? We got close to having everybody started sitting tight. I started sitting tight. Nobody was really sure what would happen. Typically in the having year, crypto and btc does take a little dip right after and then it starts to recover and then there's some market dominance and then you know money starts flowing in and then people start taking gains and then they start flowing into alt season and then the alts run this was the only year that was different where btc made a high revisited a high made a new high before the halving so that kind of threw me off too so i sat let's just look real quick though we're talking about like dominance and stuff so if you pop over to coin market cap you're going to see market cap is 2.3 trillion it's down two percent almost three the 24 hour volume is declining so there's a little uncertainty in the market right it's neutral fear and greed btc dominance is 53 percent ethereum's 15 gas is really low that's all pretty good right but if you start looking at it later after the halving what we're talking about alt season market cap will keep flowing up to like two three billion uh, trillion where BTC dominance will start to outflow. That means that not just is it outflowing from BTC and moving into alts, more money's coming into the market. So are we in alt season yet? No, but we had a lot of pop and drops. That's what we were trading right before BTC halved. There were some runners going on and SEI was one of those. That's where we're just chart trading. We're not looking at tokenomics. We're looking at, is it moving? And that goes back to what we were just looking at here. Was it moving? Well, there was nothing going on. That's the tail end of a season market changeover phase changeover and then it starts to change and volume and interest came back in so we're going to kind of look at volume for our guide for a lot of things we're going to do if we're a new trader too like where's a good logical exit let's let some points in the chart dictate and let's also look over at compare some apples to apples so it looks like pretty much that is the the beginning of sci is, is pretty much right there same thing same pattern Pretty much all over, a little less volume on Binance, but same thing. So let's go back to here. Let's find SEI. So we can set it for tokenomics as well. It's already ranked 61. 
53 cents. What's their issue? Circulating supply. So I'll just pop over here and check that. How much of the issue is out? 28% of the total issue is out. So as they keep issuing, you know, it'll be diluting. Fully diluted right now is five. Heading up. Heading up to five and a half. Let's see. Volume is 23 million a day, roughly, or was today anyway on Binance. Coinbase is a lot less. They're issued on Buy, Bit Up, Bit, Kraken, KuCoin, Gate.io, HTX, Bitfinex. They're on all the exchanges that really matter. So, as far as the tokenomics of like your question of, you know, you're not sure is it a good project, could they rug? I think probably more about token unlocks. And we'll have to go back to the second part of your question, look to see on the website, is it token unlocks? Like, I mean, I wouldn't call it rugging. You know, it's more if. The team has set unlocks for every six months or every year. They're going to sell and it is going to affect price. So that's always something to be aware of. But you're going to the bull market as well. So let's pop back over to Coinbase. Anyway, let's get a big view on this. Make sure all these charts do match up. There we got some markups. So we're already above where I thought we were going to go, right? We're, we're maxed out. So when I was trading this back at, I don't know, the videos might've been 20 cents or 30 cents because that's probably where I was messing with it. And I probably got to 50, I think I sold at 55 and I was like so happy. I was like, oh my God, yeah, 55 cents. And then it just, it marched on. I think that was probably the area right in there, 38 to 55. But I'm not trying to be greeting it every last time because then you get left behind. As you see some of the trades I have on now, I got left behind because I got a little greedier. Sometimes it's better just to accept that you're not going to top tick the market or bottom take the market, right? You're just settle for what you get. If you get a few thousand dollars or, you know, 50%, take it. You're happy, right? So Abe's asking, where could it go? Well, let's not get too greedy, Abe. Let's look at it like this, though. That's the trajectory in general, right? That was a trajectory until it broke down. Now it's below, but it's revisited the floor of what I always kind of thought was going to be the top. That was because we probably broke that candle down in time frames, and there must have been a reason we picked that because that hadn't happened yet. So let's go back off of this chart real quick. Let's drop into like hourlies. Now we got to do some scrolling. Got to do the old scroll, 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 scroll. Fact. Let's go smaller. Let's see how that dropped. Go ahead and blow it up, and that's what I got this amazing mouse for, so we can scroll like a champ. Boom, boom, boom. Dun, dun. Let's see, was it September? So we're in November, getting close. So we're going to dial in and see how that day was formed, that big-ass pop and drop. There we go. On the 15-minute. So that was probably why I'd marked it off. I think I had said I felt like... The very, very high is a dollar, obviously, so we could probably get back to a dollar. Before all this other was formed and we were trading it, we looked at like some key levels, like, you know, this was a pretty key level. That was the top of that. That was where it came back and bounced and it just couldn't retest. It couldn't do its thing. You can go back and watch that video. And this is also where it like wound up, right? So it shot off of here. That was the main overhead resistance before it took off in that short little pop. Unfortunately, it didn't take much volume to ramp that up. And I mean, as soon as it got there, everybody was aware inside of 15 minutes because their candles, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes. Within an hour, people realized, holy crap, it's a dollar. And they just sold it off. They didn't even sell it off back to like the accumulation area, right? They sold it off below. And they sold it back to like the originals. So 19 cents is probably, you know, fair. Let's say they started dumping all their tokens. Could it go back down to like 19 cents? Yeah. Let's mark some other stuff off though, realistically right there. See that one right there? That's probably a logical place it's gonna go is 70 cents. So I'd say we probably see a retest between 67 and 70, right? That's a good place to possibly sell. Um, up in this area where the volume popped up and it got a little, little nice before it just fell apart. Maybe up in the 82 cent area. And if you get greedy and try for a dollar, you'll probably get smoked. You'll probably be the last guy at the party. Now, that's not to say that if the bull run starts and all season starts, that if the tokenomics look good, that this couldn't go to three, four dollars. It can. Let's look at the overall pattern. But realistically, that kind of sell off right away. That might have been one of your things, like your unlocks you were talking about. Maybe the team dumped. I don't know. I wasn't around then. I don't. 
I don't trade this project. I don't watch this project like that. So I couldn't say like, oh yeah, that was clearly this. Don't you know? Don't pay attention to that. If it gets back on trend though, how does it look? I mean, there's definitely interest in it when it starts popping. If it holds in this area and gets back on trend over time, like maybe out in July, September, let's just say it starts to slow grind into August where BTC generally runs up pretty high in the next, you know, six to 18 months. And then, like I said, tops out, more money's coming in. You're past, you know, the 2.3 trillion mark. You're at the 3 or 4 trillion mark, but BTC dominance is declining. Alt season will come by. And every token that even remotely matters and doesn't matter is going to run. So where could you get out at? A good trade to get out at is 70 cents, like we talked about up in that area. $1 would be a good thing. If it climbed up over a dollar and it hung out and it kept testing a dollar and it wasn't breaking down and, you know, volume was starting to come in, it's a good chance it could go up. Good spot. It could probably end up 250 if it gets back on trend and starts climbing. I'd say around, you know, $1.90, I'd be looking to probably exit, but you know, that's so far down the road, I'd revisit that because this technically could just keep breaking down and go back to 19 cents. If you're already in it, you're stuck in it, you're stuck in it. Just hang on because it's better to wait it out right now and see how alt season plays out than it is to be like, I'm going to dump it. That's just me personally. I've got some SEI again, I think it's 77 or maybe even 80. And I was only looking for the $1 retest. I got a little bit too greedy and I missed. So I'm holding it. You know, that's okay with me because in the factor of if I didn't know too much about all season and everything else and I don't need the money back, well, then what's a hurt just to hang on and see what happens. However, this is alt season coming up. This is BTC's having time. Generally, every single having everything goes up in the next, you know, 12 months or so. So if you don't need the money back or you don't see some hotter project, you know more about SEI looks good on the chart in general It's starting to accumulate as long as this holds and does it fall apart. We'll start to go sideways. We'll start to climb. Man, probably, you know, two bucks. Now, looking at it from just a fresh raw like this, yeah, definitely. It looks pretty good. It's got the volume. It's got some interest. If it doesn't break down, I can see this popping off to, let's just do it like this, right? So that was trend from the bottom out. That was your top at a dollar. Bang. And as long as the cumulative stays on trend, you'll probably get another something like this, right? It'd be nice to get in that channel. If the channel goes right, the project goes right, it brings on people and support. Looks really good, right? From this level, you're like, oh, well, that doesn't look so bad. Yeah, it could go to two bucks, three bucks, eight bucks, six bucks, stretch goal. But you got to start watching that close to see how it's reacting as it's climbing because every dollar is going to get really crazy with people wanting to take you know, profits and same thing. When you start to zoom in on this, it's not a terrible looking chart. It's a decent pullback, but everything looks like that right now. Tokenomics, you know, 53 cents. Let's do make sure that this was all. So yeah, September was a launch. September looks like it was the low. What was the low it was ever at was, oh wow. The all time low is really low. It's sub penny. Uh, and the all-time high is a dollar fourteen. So we've broken a dollar somewhere. So you'll probably see a revisit of at least a dollar fourteen, maybe a little push over to a dollar twenty. That's probably a safe area to sell the first time. And as it rejects and everyone sells like you're going to to take profits, you could probably rebuy if you like the project and want to stick with it or move on to something else. Fifty three cents, I do believe, is a pretty good buy right now. Um, I think anyone that probably buys at fifty has a good chance to sell at a eighty to ninety percent gain, just you know, on the retest potential. Uh, tokenomics. Let's see. Again, we said 28%. Is there all oh, this unlocked? What do they do? Max is 10. Was it 10 billion? That's not too high. So a dollar only makes it a $10 billion. 20 billion at two. So yeah, it's like super reasonable. Let's go see what they do. So the future, the fastest parallel blockchain. Pushing the boundaries of blockchain technology through open source development. SCI stands unlock a brand new design space for consumer facing applications. So that's the thing though. Everybody talks like that. And there's like, you know, all these side chains now, all these main chains. Uh, 380 milliseconds, 12.5, 1.2 billion transactions. And that's cool. But who's the team? You know, can they 
attract people want to build on it like that's where it really comes down to it's it's like launching a mall like if you launch a brand new mall and there's a 99 cent store in there and there's you know like an offbeat 31 flavors and all these fake ass brands instead of nike you got some you know <laughs> i don't i don't know what to say like they're like pay less resource right it's the discount mall it's not the mall so is this the mall that's going to attract Nike and Cinnabon and all the big things to it? Like the good developers and the good apps? I don't know, man. Like, I see I might. I hear good stuff here and there about it, sort of. But, you know, that's that's where your price is going to get around 2 or $3. Will this probably go to $2 just on hype and the fact that it's the bull market? Yes, most likely. Does it have a chance to go to $8, $9, $10 if everything else works out right? Absolutely, but that's a different thing. That's that's where you're getting the tokenomics, right? So community, ecosystem, developers, docs, hackathon. So they've got some tools out there to kind of help people. The ecosystem. They got a bridge. They got a stake. They've got an explorer. Let's see what the build looks like. Yeah, they got a good repository. Lots of contributors. That's cool. Um, community, blogs, institutions. And you know, I'm big at looking at who the people are <laughs> that back it. If I ever open up with a bunch of Russians and sunglasses, I, I don't care. I don't trade the projects. I don't care what it can be. I don't care if it can go to a million. I stay away from it. So let's see if we can find... <laughs> let's see if we can find some pictures of the devs. That's just a big thing in this space because any coder from anywhere without any ethics at all, but a great coding set has the ability to just absolutely wreck you. They seem smart. I don't see any pictures of them, which also scares me too, because there's no pictures of them. It's hard to, you know, look a man or woman in the eye or not be able to look them in the eye and decide like, is this an honest, trustworthy person? A lot of times, you know, you get a vibe, like when you meet someone, if, if they're creepy or, you know, looking you up and down or looking their chops and thinking your dinner, you, you kind of know, like you get that sick feeling to your stomach. You're like, yeah, this person's about to take advantage of me. A lot of times if you look at the community behind these that build these, you get the same like impression when you look at them. You're like, yeah, these guys are, <laughs> these guys are going to try to get me. Uh, man. Well, they have a lot of interesting stuff. Here we go. SCI Labs co-founders Forbes profile. Actually, they don't look too terrible. Let's go. Co-founders Jeff Fang and uh, Chandra Jog. They actually look like nice guys. Down, open. Don't look like they're about to get you. See, while many popular blockchains provide general purpose networks that developers can build on top of, SEI focuses on crypto trading to allow decentralized exchanges and trading apps that offer uses a fast and easy way to trade digital assets. Jog, a former Robin Hood engineer. Okay, so he's he's not a dick. Uh, and Fang, a Goldman Sachs. Ooh, he's a piece of shit. <laughs> Goldman Sachs, he's a scumbag. Um, with a, a cutthroat at the least, right? So let's say this. Um, if he's not cutthroat towards his customers... I'd say he'll be cut through the industry and the, the chain will probably greatly excel from his, from his Goldman Sachs tenure. Decided to build centralized trading infrastructures after witnessing Robinhood impose trade restrictions at the height of 2021 GameStop trading frenzy. They claim the blockchain's time to finality, the amount of time you needed to fully confirm a transaction, beats Ethereum's. Yeah, but a lot of people are doing that now. By orders of magnitude... 500 milliseconds, 500 milliseconds versus Ethereum six minutes. SCI launched in August. Yeah, but a, long, but a bunch of chains are doing that now. Like they're all sub milliseconds, so they're not really competing against Ethereum. Like they should say, like how are they comparing against like Solana, you know, or somebody else who's you know next gen. Thirty-five million funding raised from investors, multi-coin capital, jump crypto, and yeah, Coinbase Ventures backs them. So Coinbase, that's why they're already on Coinbase too. Is at SCI already estimated seven million. Okay, so based on all this, how they look and all that, right? Just alone, the people that are backing them, like uh, you know, you got Brian over here from Coinbase backing them. Two bucks, two bucks is is very reasonable. I think two fifty, two dollars and fifteen cents, two dollars and thirty cents is probably the area I would sell if I'm going to hold on. I will definitely sell at a dollar and if it still looks good or there's any pullback, I'll buy and I'll trade again looking for like a dollar fifty, something like that. Because fractals provide much more money than a straight shot. And let's just talk about that for a second, right? So let's say all the tokenomics looks pretty good. Uh 
let's see more from Forbes on 30. Oh, these guys aren't part of their thing though. So we'll skip them. But those guys look all right. So fractals, right? Right here. So if you're like, oh man, how much money can I make? Well, let's just say you bought it at the low. Like you're, you're, you're just a champ. You bought it at the perfect time. And you're like, where am I going to sell? Well, let's just say you decide to sell like the 210 mark, like we talked about somewhere up in there. So from 10 cents to 210, right? Let's just say 210. Make this easy. You made two bucks per coin. That's great. But what if you were a really good trader and you traded it from 10 cents up to, let's say, you know, this point and you sold and let's just say you bought, you know, rebought it. You still believe in the project had more. And let's say you're trading moving averages and you're like, oh, I'm going to rebuy the moving average of the hundred. And then, you know, you bought it again. Let's just say you trade it up into, I don't know, right there. So you missed the top, but those fractals, right? You're already making more money. You've made, you know, 50 cents here, another 30 cents there. You're making more money than that one straight shot hold. That's why traders make more money. Now here's the problem. This is where you get kind of screwed. Maybe you still believe in the project and you rebuy over here and now you've bought it in higher than it's dipped, but let's say you resell it like 150. And then it dips again. You rebuy it like 130 and then right at the two. You're always going to make more money. Always. Trading fractals. Right. Sells and rebuys. If you can hit it right. It's very hard. You know. You're not going to get it right all the time. And if you get too greedy, you'll miss tops and bottoms. But there's. See that money in there? You buy here, sell there. Buy here, sell there. Buy here, sell there. Right. But the guy that held on who bought here. And didn't even sell any of it. He's made nothing because, you know, this is where the guy bought in at. And it's like, he held it. Oh, I didn't sell it. Oh, back to where I bought it. Even below where I bought it. Oh, I didn't sell it. Oh, back to where I bought it. Even below. Most people get shooken out like right around there. And that's where I think we're at with BTC as well. Right now, after the run, there's generally a dip, right? It goes a little lower. And then there's like a relief rally like we're having today where, or the last couple of days where you're above 60K and everything's looking good. And people are like, yeah, it's happening. It's the bull run. I've heard about this. I'm about to get rich. And then everything tanks. So after the halving, like what happened? <laughs> well, that happened. And then you got your relief rally, right? And you had absolutely the accelerators turn on the other day. If you take a look at this chart, they just all of a sudden to blast it through 60 K, they turned on the printers and they just boom, 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 boom. They just rammed it and rammed it with volume to get it through just to push it up there. But how come it's not going to keep going just yet? Well, problem is it hit resistance overhead. And now same thing is starting to turn, starting to lose momentum. It's probably going to retest 59. If that retest 59, it's going to take the market with it. SEI, you could buy cheaper than a 53. Would I buy 50s? Yes. Do I think it could probably even go lower, maybe in the 40s or 30s? Sure, it could dip down there, but... You know, again, there's a whole timing thing about, do you want to get left behind? Where are you okay buying? Um, there's going to be a hard shake out though. There's going to be that last ditch. Like there is every run where they try to make everybody be like, oh, it's different this time. Fuck it's over. And it, this could come way down. I mean, this could hit, if this hit 60 and doesn't hold and start to ramp this, this is the next scenario you're talking any one of these stops is viable 52 is viable 40 is viable 25 is viable and they can rip that down in two days let's just say they start a war and let's say they drop a nuke somewhere Boop, you're going to 25 right would i buy at 25 hell yes i'd buy as much as i could get my hands on because that's not going to stay that way for very long and let's just say for whatever reason they dropped the second nuke the next day and it went to 15k would i be like oh man i got fucked no i'd buy even more because btc is going to go to 100 150 maybe probably 240 this run is, is reasonable for btc no matter what they do to it whether they rip it down to a dollar whether they take it to 50 cents 25k 50k it doesn't matter it's going to go back up so anything coming down from here, same with SCI, any of that stuff is basically a gift after having any kind of dip and shake out just gets rid of noobs that lets the institution suck it up cheap. And then next thing you know, they clear the overhead and pop next thing you know, you're at 120 and you're like, wow, when did that happen? And all of a sudden you're just going to go to 120, right? hundred K. So you'll probably come back down exactly just like this. Somewhere in there, 44s is probably logical. It's a really good test. And once it's done doing this thing. 
it's just going to bounce. Boop. When that happens, you might not see none of your alts move. You might be like, damn, BTC is moving. I should have BTC. Oh, SCI is not moving. And sit tight. Alt season comes eventually. You know, BTC, people will take gains. It'll come back to like the 100K deck and test because people are selling off. And that money that people made from there to there, they're going to start to be like, ooh, where's a juicy coin that I can 10X my gains on? And they'll start looking for things like SCI. You know, the coins like Sheeb and Bonk and things that haven't ran a thousand percent just yet. And they'll make their money. SCI though, for you, man, probably 215, probably 215 early on. If you get 215, revisit it. If it's still looking good, see where the unlocks are. Maybe they've got like a half, you know, 500, 50% unlocked at that time. And if it's still looking good and holding that line and not dipping and falling apart, then I'd probably look at somewhere around four and a quarter. Just like on that simple trajectory out for 18 months. And let's just say they got really good at what they do. They kept getting Forbes articles. They kept getting traction. People really started building there. Someone built a hot meme coin. It just, it blew up, right? It just did its thing. Um, There's probably a case for 20. Given that pattern, that volume, that early on with SEI and just straight hype. 7 million wallets. The dudes are looking pretty good. Tokenomics are not terrible. I'd give them possibly 25 on the run. Maybe. Possibly. Like, that's... That's like a super stretch goal, man. Let's just put that in purple because that's, you know. That's like the stars aligning. That's like everything goes perfect. Things go decent and the entire crypto space doesn't fall apart. $2. Yeah, $2. Everything goes right and they get a little traction. Four and a quarter. Things go pretty decent. You know, they don't get anything too wild going on. I'd say probably just under eight. Right. That's what I'd be looking at right there, Abe. Stuff like that. And again, if it starts falling apart, you got to make your choice. It's your money. But that's where I'm at. Just given the in general trending of what it's doing and where we're at, probably, probably seven. But man, that money's going to sit for so long dead. You could, you could trade that money in and out and make it in other places because it's not going to go to seven tomorrow. It's not going to go to four tomorrow. And it's not going to go to two tomorrow. It's going to retest one and have some issues and come back down. And basically it's going to give you a chance to chop it up. Like I said, several times, like that's your better bet. Um, in fact, let's do this. Let's say this. Let's the market's crazy fucking hot, right? You basically from here to here want to trade this as many times as you can. So right now you're looking good. If you're in it, you know, 25 cents, whatever, and it hits a dollar, take your profits. If it comes back underneath, maybe 80 cents, 90 cents, buy back in, right? And then maybe try to sell like 110, 120. You should start trying to play the ping pong game personally for yourself to build and pad some accounts since you're a newer trader. One, you need the experience. And two, holding on forever doesn't really give you trade experience. It gives you, you know, just like, hey, I made a trade. That's great. But if you're going to learn to actually trade and like look at some of this stuff, you're going to need to actively trade to get involved, to start to want to learn TA, learn the chart like look at tokenomics and decide like what actually goes into potentially making a price. And it makes sense to you too. And a lot of that is we just looked at, it's a long video, which you're like, what do they look like? What's the team look like? What's their experience? What's their goal? What are they after? You know, where has it been? Like how much, you know, issue do they have? One of the token unlocks, who's backing them? How did it react when BTC tanked? How did it react with other people in the sector? You know, like, do they, how's their website? Does it look like they really are going to go someplace or are they just trying to rug you? Like rug you? No, these guys are definitely not going to rug you. That's not going to happen. They would have to fuck the program up for it to go back to 19 cents or in general, just like the market maker tanks it back to, to 19 cents, but they're not going to rug you. Definitely not. All right, man. I hope you enjoy the video. It's super long. So <laughs> This is the best way I can break down tokenomics. That's how I look at it. So everything I look at, I look at even longer than this, but I got to kill a video somewhere. But for me personally, I would go back and start reading articles. I would also go look at their Twitter. 
see what they're posting, um, look at all their social medias, jump into their Telegram groups, jump into their Discord. If it's something you're planning on putting a lot of money into or, like, you really need it to pay off, you need to do even more than this. Like, this is enough for me to look at the chart and go, yeah, I'll get two bucks out of this, right? I'll get $1.50 out of this. How soon? Six months. If I need to know, like, I'm going to bet my house on this or, like, my retirement, oh, I'm going to go for four or five or six hours of, you know, really deep deep dive on this guy right here the guy that worked at goldman's i want to know everything he's been up to i want to go try to find his personal twitter his personal instagram i want to see how he talks about girls how he treats his family i want to see if he's a piece of shit unless there's any comments that are like yeah fuck you you're a punk ass bitch in high school bring that time you hit me in the bottle yep okay that's what i'm gonna look for right i'm gonna look for dirt like way way down dirt same for this guy. Like, what's he, what's he like? What country is he from? You know, what are his politics? Does he vote left? Does he vote right? How does he feel about, you know, Ross Ulbrich? How does he feel about Silk Road? How does he feel about his tech? Like, what is this tech for? Is this tech for bucking the government? Is this tech for, you know, being under scrutiny of the SEC? Because the newer chains, the chains that want to work with the SEC, they're the ones that are really going to make it, Right. The older chains that are like, fuck the government, and I'm trying to do this so we can get away and break the law, like, those are going to do good for a while, but you need 96% of the world to onboard the crypto, and not everyone's an outlaw, not everyone wants to break the rules. So the guys that are really going to get paid are the guys that are going to play ball with the regulators. So that's what you want to look for. Given the fact that this guy's a former Robin Hood engineer, he's, he's a regulated guy, he wants to be regulated, he's part of the system, he's not trying to buck it, he's got a college degree, he ain't trying to fuck his life up. The Goldman guy, that's different. Those guys are, you know, Goldmans. If you go look at the Goldmans, their history, and the kind of people they hire that are attracted to Goldmans, they're ruthless corner cutters. Um, their morals and scruples are low, really fucking low. So, like, that's the guy I would dig into really hard if I'm betting my house. If you're betting five, 6000 bucks, it doesn't matter to you. Like, bro, you could stop way, like, 10 minutes ago in the video and just shoot for 2 bucks. All right, man. Enjoy. Thanks for watching, Abe.